Well, the 21st century is where everything changes and Torchwood, as always, is ready. Welcome back to another Torchwood Big Finish review. In today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the latest release as a part of the main range, being Dinner and a Show, as written by Gareth David Lloyd, who does, of course, also play Yanto Jones within Torchwood itself. This episode also stars Nako Mori as Toshiko Sato alongside Yanto as well. Now, this is an episode that, I must admit, I didn't really think too much about about prior to listening to this release. However, if you've been watching my previous Torchwood reviews over the past few months, you will of course know that due to current circumstances and me having a little bit more time on my hands, I've decided to dip into Torchwood and do a few occasional reviews here and there over the summer to kind of pass the time. The brilliant thing with this story is that due to it featuring Toshiko Sato and Yanto Jones, we have a continuation of that relationship of early Torchwood. Within the previous review, I was taking a look at Burn Gorman as Dr. Owen Harper, and very unusually, given that Owen isn't within this story, we still have a connection to his character, because this episode is set within Valentine's, and we have Toshiko basically organising a date at the opera, however, Owen doesn't turn up, therefore we have Yanto going in his place, and we have a little bit of a discussion of Owen as a character, therefore, again, if you are looking for a background to Owen and kind of discussing him as a personality, this is another episode that I recommend to you, even even though he isn't actually present. Of course, one of the additional benefits of this story is due to it being written by Gareth David Lloyd, we also get some further development of Yanto. I have previously, funnily enough, in fact, listened to some Gareth David Lloyd stories. I listened to the Torchwood 1 series, which is an area of Torchwood, the only area of Torchwood that I have, in fact, reviewed since its very beginning. I know that every time he has contributed to that series, he's done some absolutely brilliant stories, really delving into character and emotion. He's a very real writer, and I think this story is another perfect example of that. So first off, and as always, in the description below, there will be the link to go and take a look at this release on the Big Finish website. The physical CD is £10.99 and the download is £8.99. There's also the trailer that can be listened to, as well as a few additional story details. It is also worth noting, Big Finish are now back open and running for physical CD sales. Due to the current backlog of the past few months, it will take a while for certain deliveries to go out. However, they are now shipping, so if you order a physical CD, it will hopefully arrive within the next few weeks. So taking a look at the production credits for this story, as per usual, we have some of the familiar names working on this episode. It has been directed by Scott Handcock, the music has been created by Blair Moat, the producer is James Goss, the script editor is Scott Handcock, the sound designer is Steve Foxen, and this episode has been written by Gareth David Lloyd, with theme music by Murray Gold, and the executive producers, saying it with me everyone, is Jason Hare Gallery and Nicholas Briggs. And for this review, I'm going to start off with a compliment to Blair Moat, because I don't think I've mentioned him throughout the previous reviews, and I really should be, because Blair Moat is an excellent composer. He did a brilliant job of Class, and the soundtrack for Class is by far my favourite aspect of Class. And I think that with this story and the other monthly range releases that I've listened to from Torchwood, he has a way with music that feels incredible, honestly. He has a way to create music that is for every single occasion. Within the previous story, we had some lovely clinical and cold music, and then in this episode, we have some music that really embraces the theme and location of the Cardiff Opera House, where we do, of course, have Toshiko and Yanto visiting on Valentine's Day, and that is intertwined throughout this story, and it creates an absolutely brilliant atmosphere. And to be honest, I would willingly listen to a CD. I know that Big Finish did this years ago. However, I would love a CD of music from Torchwood from Big Finish because there is something brilliant about the music for Torchwood. I love the way that we have the subtle references to the Murray Gold score from the TV show itself, but also it's just got a nice, satisfying tune to it, which is unusual. If you've listened to the Torchwood series, you will know exactly what I'm going on about. However, maybe even if Blair is allowed to do so, it would be good to see some of that music, in fact, put on his SoundCloud because it is lovely and and I just want to hear more of it. So taking a look at the story itself, I'm going to start off this review by complimenting Naoko Mori as Toshiko Sato, because I haven't listened to any of her Tortured releases before, and it was nice to see her interacting with another member of the cast, something of which that was referred to within the behind the scenes, is it is nice to have a story such as this, because due to Toshiko and Owen Harper's death within the early days of Torchwood, I still haven't watched that episode for a long, long time, I really need to get back to it at some point, but due to that, we don't really 
have her connecting with the Torchwood team as much. We don't have stories that are light-hearted. And of course, Torchwood Series 1 is very adult and gritty with a lot of serious life or death things going on. And therefore, it's nice to have an episode such as this, which is a pause button, essentially. Admittedly, yes, again, it is life or death. However, it is life or death with two certain members of the Torchwood team, allowing them to develop as people. We get to hear a little bit more about Toshiko, especially her problem and relationship with Owen Harper and talking about how basically she's been treated over the past few episodes, much like how we've seen within Torchwood itself. And we have this whole lovely idea of interactions of people and relationships and what you can get from different people within your life because we have a rather unexpected link between Toshiko and Yanto which I didn't really think about prior to listening to this episode because this episode is set within from what I understand the gap between series one and series two where Jack has gone off with the Doctor possibly has a few adventures in time and space who knows basically Jack is not on the scene and that is what I'm getting from this story therefore Yanto is coping with that fact. The fact that Jack has gone out into the universe and he doesn't quite know when he is going to return. Likewise, you've got Toshiko dealing with that concept of absentness as well, because Owen's just not doing anything that she would like, ideally, in an ideal world, because he's not turning up to this opera house. He's not being a nice person, in a way. He's being rather reserved still, and not really doing things that you would expect. So because of that, we start the episode with a lovely scene that deals with that relationship, deals with that problem, and gets the story off to a very strong start. Likewise, later on, we have a scene with Yanto and Chishiko sat on the roof after everything is over. And what I love is Gareth David Lloyd could have very easily ended the episode, having solved the story, defeated the alien. There we go, we wander our way back to the Torchwood Hub. However, the brilliant thing about the end of this story is we have a scene with them sat on the roof of the Opera House and looking out over Cardiff Bay and just talking about life and loss and their connections with different people. And it is a really lovely, heartfelt moment, and Gareth David Lloyd just Yan Tum also has a great moment within the middle half of this story where he kind of acknowledges the absence of Jack and saying they will get through this regardless of him not being there. See, so yeah, a really lovely piece, as I say, if you are a fan of early days Torchwood, because I got vibes of early day Torchwood from this story. Still big finish putting their own stamp on it, making it personal and making it a very, very intriguing listen, especially if you are fans of the characters. So much like with the other reviews as a part of this series, I'm not going to dissect the plot. Ah, that's another Torch of Main Range title. I'm not going to go into the story in massive amounts of detail because the thing about episodes like this, due to them being only one hour singular stories, it's simply best just going and buying them if you are interested by what I say throughout the review because they are only one hour. And if I say everything about the story, I'm not going to leave anything to really gain from the episode overall. However, in this story, we see them visit the Opera House on Valentine's Day and we find out that the entirety pretty much of the audience are aliens that have come to earth to experience the opera however there are some particular aliens within the opera house audience are in fact very very deadly indeed and the vast majority of the story basically see Yanto and Toshiko being locked in a bubble which is the opera house they can't go out of the opera house they can't phone out of the opera house they can't seek help and they need to solve the situation from the inside everybody that they come across is in fact an alien from these weird and wacky different worlds. To start with you get the impression from this story that it's going to be a rather bizarre and wild episode that is quite light-hearted but because it's got those emotional ties in there as well it does also make a rather serious and human narrative much like in a similar manner that the previous story Iceberg was dealing with Owen Harper and the loss of one of his friends many many years ago prior to him becoming a part of Torchwood. So again we are continuing that very gritty human aspect that the Torchwood main range seem to basically have in buckets. We also have a rather nice touch where we're talking about music in the episode itself and what people like when it comes to their musical preferences and the fact that Yanto had in his past like a gothic grungy metal type phase and then Toshiko likes rather classical and opera house style music and it's very different. Their personalities kind of collide in this episode, Toshiko being half drunk at the opera house of course becoming confident for the date itself that was meant to happen at the very start of the story and because of that we kind of get an alien response to the idea of music and even aliens in outer space have preferences of entertainment and music styles and I like that. I felt that Gareth David Lloyd has taken a rather everyday thing 
and made it very alien. And I thought that that was a cool aspect of the story that I enjoyed listening to. One of my main compliments of the Torchwood main range releases stands for this release as well, where for some reason there is something to do with the music, production and directing that sounds so satisfying to listen to. It's almost like you can put this story on regardless of what situation you are currently working under and you are kind of lost in the plot of the episode. And I don't know if that's just because the vast majority of the stories have a very small cast list, meaning that in order for an episode to stand up within Torchwood, you do need very strong personalities and very strong characters with a lot to say in order for the story to flow. Because normally for the vast majority of Doctor Who episodes, especially the ones that are seen on TV, if you've got a very, very small cast list, the episode can drag quite a lot, and that is sometimes seen for the box set episodes as well. However, for this episode, we have another example of how a very small cast list, being Toshiko, Yanto, and a few aliens in there as well, can make the story and pad it out in a really effective way. Making, once again, if you are a fan of Torchwood on TV and you are wanting to make that jump into Torchwood on audio, this is another story that I do recommend because it is so easy to listen to, it's easy to follow the plot, and the characters do jump off the page. Although that said, because I have now listened to a number of different Torchwood main range stories, I wouldn't necessarily say this is my favourite or anything like that. I still think that Smashed is rather far up there, as was the mysterious nature of Dissected. However, I still found it an enjoyable watch, and the beauty about Big Finish as a whole, and something of which that I have acknowledged, well, more so than ever, very recently, is of course Big Finish have recently announced the Raw Last Centurion box set and there are some people out there that really can't be bothered and they think why on earth does this exist? Why do we need two box sets worth? And part of me is thinking what are they going to do with that series? And then on the complete opposite of the spectrum you've got another area of the audience that are jumping for joy at the concept of Arthur Darville having his own spin-off. That is the beauty of Big Finish. Not everything will float everybody's tastes. However, the point is everything that Big Finish does put out will be for a certain audience somewhere. It's a concept that should always be bared in mind when looking at Big Finish releases. And of course, as I say, if you are a fan of Torchwood, then yeah, check out this story if you are interested by what I've said throughout this review. So I've just had a quick look to finish off this review and apparently the next release as a part of the Torchwood main range is Save Our Souls as written by Scott Hancock featuring Rowena Cooper as Queen Victoria, another area of Torchwood that has seemed to be expanded upon in recent years. I think she's had a number of main range stories by this point, however I've not listened to any so I think that's going to be a very interesting release to listen to, delving into the early years of Torchwood. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.